Let's make a finish line. This will work in both 2D and 3D. I'm gonna show you in 2D and then I'll just show you the things that you need to adjust to make it work in 3D. So I have a very, very simple project here. This is just a, a copy of like Color Bump that you can find on the App Store. It's basically just a 2D game where I'm controlling the white dot, the white other white dots don't hurt me, but the red dots restart my level. And I'm gonna add a finish line to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into my game here um, and I am just going to right click and create a 2D sprite and let's create a 2D square. And that's this square right here. And I want it to be a finish line so I'm gonna make sure that it covers the entire length or width of where I want the character to finish. Now if you're doing this in 3D, you would create a 3D uh, cube and then stretch it. So I'm gonna grab the corner stretch here and I'm gonna go bleh, bleh, and then go bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> and now it is stretched out to the entire length that I want the finish line to be. And I'm gonna go ahead and for now, you don't have to do this, but you can turn off the sprite render and then it's an invisible finish line. You can use these for checkpoints or for something like that that you don't want the actual finish line to be physically visible. For the tutorial, let's go ahead and keep the sprite renderer on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add a Box Collider 2D. If this is a 3D game object, you're just gonna add a Box Collider, but because this is 2D, Box Collider 2D. And then the very first thing I'm gonna do is mark it as trigger. This is a trigger. This is optional. If you want your player to actually collide with the finish line and stop moving, then you don't have to mark it as a trigger. But I want my player to go into the finish line, but not actually hit it. That way, the enemies that I bump and anything else that's moving on the scene doesn't hit the finish line and then stop. They just pass right through. All right, so I have is trigger here. I'm also gonna double check my player and make sure it's tagged as player. That makes way more sense than just leaving it as uh, untagged. That way, when I go in my random, I'm writing my code, it makes more sense. Okay, so I have my finish line here, box collider on it, marked as a trigger. Now let's write a script. So I'm gonna add a component. I'm gonna to choose to name it finish line. So I just called my script finish line and create a new script. It's gonna be called finish line and create an add. You can't see that on my screen, it's further down, but we're gonna create and add this script. This script is gonna sit on this finish line. You can create it other places and add it to other game objects if you want, but I know that my script is only gonna be accessible from this finish line. Let's go ahead and open it up. All right, the first thing that we need to do is we need to be able to access the scene manager that manages our scene. So we have scene level one and scene level two. Well, the scene manager allows us to write code that ties those two together. So we're gonna say using unity engine dot scene management, semicolon, awesome. Now we're not going to do anything in our start or anything in our update. All we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new function. You can actually delete those other two if you want. So let's do that. We don't need start or update any of those, let's go ahead and we're gonna say on trigger enter 2D. So void on trigger enter, and we're gonna choose 2D. If you're doing 3D, it's just gonna be on trigger enter. So on trigger enter 2D, it takes a parameter that is of a collider 2D and it's called collision. So collision is gonna track everything that has entered in to this trigger. So we only want it to trigger the next level if the player is the one that enters the finish line. So we're gonna say if collision dot tag equals equals player. We tagged our player as player. Now we're saying if the thing that collided with this trigger, find that tag, if it happens to be player, then do this stuff. Now we're going to go to the next level. So we're gonna call scene manager dot load scene. And we could just pass in the build index of the scene that we want to go to. So if this is the final level in your game, you can pass in a spe just the build index of your U1 screen right here. But that doesn't help us if we wanna go from level one to level two and use this same script to go from level two to level three. If we say go to level two, then when we finish level two, it will also just go to level two. So we're gonna do something a little clever. We're gonna grab that scene manager again and we're gonna do load active scene, sorry, get 
active scene. That's gonna get the active scene that we're in. Now, this is a function, so it's gonna take those parentheses, and then we're gonna call the build index of the active scene that we're on, and we're gonna increase it by one. So what this does, it says, find out what scene we're on, grab the build index for it, and just increase it by one. Now, let's save this. The script here is done, but we're not quite done. We are referencing a build index, but what is that? Well, when we go to file build settings, we get this menu right here where we have the scenes in build. So what we can do is grab our scenes, drag them in here and put them in the order in which we want them to happen. And we can see these numbers on the right hand side, that's the build index. So when we're on level one and we collide with the finish line, it says, okay, grab level one, grab the build index related to level one or the scene that we're on, add one to it, which is now one, now load that scene. And that's, this is the magic. This is what helps you do your, uh, your level progression, your finish line stuff, is this build settings place right here. If you to have them out of order. If you have a random menu screen in here, you will go to the menu instead of going to the next scene. This code relies on that your levels are in the order in which you want the user or the player to progress through. Now that we have that done, let's check it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play here. I am going to go through my game the cheater way. I'm gonna hit the finish line and boom, we've gone to level two. You can see right here, we are now on level two. This script works and there's no finish line on level two, so there's no place to go. But if there was a level three, it would also work for level three. All right, build this, add this to your game. It's super cool.